All right, YouTube. So the other day I took my Mavic Mini drone down to the beach in Margate to fly it around. It was the first time I'd flown it. And so we're gonna have a look at that footage that I shot and then afterwards we'll jump into DaVinci Resolve and have a look at how I graded it. Let's see the sequence first. Okay, so here we are in DaVinci Resolve. I've already got the timeline set up, as you can see here. I'm in the color tab. Uh, so these are all the clips that I wanna use, but for today's video, I've got these two clips highlighted in pink, one over here, one over here. The reason I wanna look at this clip is because uh, these have already got the grade applied, by the way. So this is the grade that you just watched in the video at the beginning, in the sequence at the beginning. So this one was particularly hard to grade because the exposure was all over the place. So that's why I think this one would be a good one to work on. Basically the uh, Mavic Mini has this auto exposure, which you can lock off and you can adjust ever so slightly, but this was the first time I'd ever flown it. So I was still getting used to it. So the, the exposure was a bit tricky on this clip. And on this clip, I really like the color contrast. So you've got the different colors of the sky, the sea and the sand. Uh, so I think that one's a really nice one to work on too. Let's jump into uh, the first clip. Now, you are only seeing one screen here. I am in DaVinci Resolve and I've got two screens on the go. So my RGB Parade, my Vectorscope, my Waveform and my Histogram are all on the left-hand screen. Uh, so you guys won't see any of that. Sorry about that. I'm gonna try and figure out how to do it all in one screen at some point, but for today, I think it's absolutely fine. Um, so what I'm going to do is, you can see here, I've got set up, this is all the nodes that I've used to create this one. So what I'm going to do is highlight all of these, right click and go reset nodes. Uh, and that hasn't worked. Uh, so I'm going to do each one individually. And actually probably what I'll do is cut all of this out of the video. And when I've reset them all, I will come back to you. Okay, so I've reset all of the nodes. I'll figure out how to do that in batch later on. I'm, I'm not an expert at this stuff. I just think it's interesting to share whatever knowledge that you have. Um, so I've reset all of the nodes on this. So this is my setup for nodes that I use. So I always have the denoise here. Basically with the Mavic Mini, this is the 2.7K footage at 25 frames per second. And um, it's really good, but I think the more you play around with the footage, you're more likely you are to get digital noise. So uh, that's the reason I always denoise right at the start and then you're working with um, as, as clean footage as you can, basically. Then I've got my contrast and saturation node over here, my highs, mids and lows, where um, I'll be working mainly with the curves the color, which is for the white balance. And then I've got two separate ones over here, sky and water, uh, because um, I was adding gradients to them, which we'll get to later. And then over here, finally, the LUT. Um, and I always put the LUT at the end because I think a LUT is a good basis for you to work from for all of your adjustments. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is denoise this. Um, so I'm going to go into my motion effects and I'm going to take that up to probably around five. It doesn't need too much. It just needs a little bit to soften out any noise that comes in once you start your color correction. Then I'm going to add my LUT. The LUT that I like to use is one of the 
3D look presets for DJI in Blackmagic. And I like the 70 line. So it's the DJI Phantom 4 D Log 2 Rec 709, which is a good start. Um, I will make a lot of adjustments to this based on what that LUT has done. Uh, okay, so let's get into this. What don't I like? The first thing I don't like is that that LUT massively, massively crushes those blacks, uh, which is too much. So I'm going to go into my color wheels over here on my HML node and the first thing I'm going to do is lift those up so that we're getting more of that detail that we were losing before. So that's looking a little bit better. I can see in my parade there that I can push those highlights a little bit and I think I want to push the gamma a little bit too in the mid-tones. So that's looking a bit more balanced. I'm going to add some contrast to that and I can still see we're getting a lot more detail around this area than we were after we'd added the LUT so I'm pleased about that. Uh, also in the contrast and saturation tab I'm going to add some saturation in there. Um, I feel like on the day that I shot this it was slightly warmer. I feel like this all feels a little bit cold so I'm going to go ahead and play around with the temperature and that's looking a little bit nicer already. Uh, it feels a little bit green so I'm going to play with the tint and maybe add some pink into that. Maybe like the sky in Margate is often quite pink so uh, I quite like adding pink to it. It just makes it, gives it that sort of romantic feel which I really nice. Uh, I'm going to add another bit more saturation there because I think we can get more out of that. Yeah I like that, I like the way it's bringing out Old Kent Market over here and the, the Turner. So I like that so far, that's really cool. Okay I'm going to play around with the sky now because I feel like we can make this sky a bit more dramatic. So what I'm going to do is go in and get this gradient tool over here, bring that up to the sky, bring it down and over here on the right hand side you can see how much of your clip is being affected so this grey area here is the mask and you can see it's fading into the area up top that's going to be affected so what I'm going to try and do is make that a little bit more dramatic by dropping the gain down, drop the gamma down, drop the lift down so already we should be getting, let's have a look, so that was before, that's after. I'm also going to drop some contrast in there and I'm going to add some saturation into it. I wonder if I should play around with the colour temperature of it as well. Mm, so that's making it a little cooler. I think I prefer it, do you know what, for the sake of this video, let's do something completely different. Let's make it a little bit warmer and a little bit more pink just to give it a nice bit of colour contrast. That's probably a little bit too much but for the sake of this video I think it's fine. Actually no it's not, I don't like it. Let's take it down a bit to about there, cool that down a bit. So this is the sky before and after. Yeah I'm gonna go into my lift gamma again and play around with that, drop that down a little bit more, drop the gamma down a little bit more and I'm actually going to raise the gain and I'm also going to add some more contrast into there, that hasn't worked so I'm going to take the gain back down, yeah that's working for the drama of it a little bit more, yeah that's looking cool now. I like that. Uh, and then moving on to the water, I'm going to do something similar. It's just to basically create a bit more contrast in the scene and lead the eye more towards the harbour, which is what I want to do. Um, so after adding in these gradients, uh, you'll notice that the harbour has actually been affected a little bit as well. So then I'll go back and adjust the image as a whole again. 
So here we've got a new gradient for the water. I'm going to turn that round, bring it down to the bottom of the screen, and then we'll be able to see what's being affected over here. So I'm going to take this up a bit because I think we can make that a little bit bigger. And I'm going to go and take the lift down. I'm going to take the gamma down. And I'm going to take the gain down. So, so far, let's see what we've got there. Yeah, so it just gives it a sort of darkening around the bottom edge of the clip there. And I'm going to go and play around with the contrast and saturation here. Actually, probably just the saturation. And I'm going to see if I can change the color of the water to make it a little bit more blue. Yeah, that's nice. I like that. Let's have a look at a before and after. So that's before and that's after, before and after. And I can notice what we've lost now, having done that, is we've lost some of the detail around the harbour here and uh, around that stretch of Old Town over there. So I'm going to go into my HML tab and I'm going to bring that lift up ever so slightly and there you can start to see that detail coming back in. So let's have a look. So this is how the clip started. And this is what we've got now. Man, I really like that. Uh, normally I would spend a little bit more time on it, but for today's video, I think that's that's looking pretty cool. Um, so what you can do in Resolve, which is quite cool, is I could now take a snapshot of that, the grade that I've applied to this. I can take a snapshot of it and then apply it to the next clip really easily. Uh, but I'm not going to do that because I can't be bothered. So what I'm going to do is probably cut now, reset this clip so that I've still got all the nodes, but they're all reset. So I'll come back to you when I've done that. Okay, so I've reset all of those nodes. The reason I haven't done the apply grade thing is because all of that takes place on my second monitor, so you guys wouldn't be able to see it. Uh, in fact, you know what? Let's try... So this is working uh, with just one monitor now. So what I'm going to do is go over to here, right click on the clip that I was just grading and go grab still. And I'm going to rename that to something like uh, YouTube vid grade. Okay, so then what I can do is select the next clip that we're going to work on and go right click, apply grade. And that gives us the basis to work on. So that should be now fairly similar to the other one in terms of style, which is pretty cool. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is now go back into my two screens and start grading on this based on the um, still that we just took from the last one. So let's have a look. The first thing I know that I wanna do is reset the sky gradient and reset the water gradient because I want to use different ones. So I'm going to relabel this water one to sand because what I'm going to do is bring in over this side, I'm going to play around with the color of the sand here. And to be honest, I'm probably not going to use this sky one because I already quite like what the sky is doing there. Uh, do you know what? Having literally just applied that grade. This is pretty good. Looking at my vector scopes and the feel and tone of this, I'm gonna play around with the color a little bit because I feel like it could be a little bit warmer in the mid-tones. Yeah, I like that. It's just given it, it's just warmed it up ever so slightly, which I like. So my tint is already on nine, which it's got a little bit of pink in there. Do you know what? I'm actually pretty pleased with this. But the thing that, so the thing that I'm going to play around with is going into this sand node over here. I'm going to bring a gradient in. Let's turn it round. And I'm going to put it down in this bottom corner down here. And then we can start to see on the right hand side over here, you can see what it's affecting. So I don't want it to affect too much of the other of the, I don't want it to affect too much up here. So I'm just going to rotate it. A little bit and then bring it a bit further in so basically I'm trying to affect 
this part of it to give us a little bit of color contrast. And what I wanna do is go into the temperature and I wanna warm that up. Yeah, that's nice. So let's have a look at a before and after of that. So it's just giving it a little bit of warmth down here, which I think brings overall depth to the shot, which I really like. The other thing that I'm gonna do is play around, add a little bit of contrast to it, and probably take the lift down a bit. Let's have a look at before and after. Yeah, I really like that. Do I wanna play around with this side? No, I don't think I do. Okay, I think, I think I'm done with those two clips, and I think I like them. Let's have a look at this one. So this is how it came in, and this is what we've done with it. Let's have another look at this one. That's, that's how it came in, and that's what we've done with it. So yeah, that's very quickly and very roughly how I basically grade footage from the Mavic Mini drone. So I hope you learned something from that. If you feel like there are things that I could do better, please, please tell me in the comments, because like I said in one of my first videos, I always want to learn new tips and tricks, so I'm very open to new stuff. Hopefully some of you got something from me that you'd never had before, so that would be great. This drone is so much fun, man. The DJI Mavic Mini. It's the first drone that I've owned if you don't count the drone that I had about five years ago where on the first flight a propeller snapped off mid-flight. If you've never flown a drone before, it's so easy to learn and figure out what to do. The app is really intuitive, so you just learn as you go and it gives you like tips and tricks as you go along, which is just absolutely brilliant. I don't know that I'd use any of this footage on a job because it's 2.7K and while that's fine because you know a lot of my jobs I'm outputting at 1080p anyway, the footage isn't like mind blowing. For 250 quid it's very 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 good. I just don't know that I would use it on a client job that was asking for drone footage. That said, it's loads of fun. If you haven't had a drone before, I'd highly recommend it. I hope you got something out of this video, whether that's the desire to go out and buy this drone or whether you want to start using DaVinci Resolve, whatever it is, I hope you got something out of it. If you did, please feel free to give me a like or a subscribe, that would be massively helpful. And I'll see you in the next one. Bruv, stop droning on. What are you, in second grade?